Before you download a project to a Maple Systems HMI, you may wish to configure user permissions and security. In this video, we'll show you how to set up enhanced security. Compared to basic security, which we covered in a previous video, using enhanced security allows for longer passwords, customizable usernames, more user security classes, and the ability to modify user accounts and permissions from the HMI itself after you've deployed it to production. We'll walk you through how to configure these functions today. As for the sample project we're using, this is our enhanced security sample project that we're showing here. And you can find this on our website at maplesystems.com. Just look for the security enhanced mode project. Go to technical support and sample projects to find that. To begin, we start in eBPro in the System Parameter Settings window, looking at the Security tab. Click Enhanced Security Mode to use Enhanced Security. And you can see in this project, we already have two users set up, Manufacturing and Engineering, with their passwords, and their user classes set up as well. For Manufacturing, we have Class A, and for Engineering, we have Classes A and B set up. And that's all for those users. No other users are enabled here. The admin user is enabled by default. There's a default password of six ones. You can make this administrator a secret user if you wish to. We'll come back to this and I'll show you how you can use that in your projects if you choose. Next, very important, is the control address. This is the start of a set of 20 registers that are used by the HMI to keep track of accounts and to modify permissions and passwords and so on. So when we start with 8950, click on Usage to see some examples. First is the command or control register. You'll write values of various commands for logging in, logging out, adding and deleting users and so on into this register. The result of the command execution will be written into the next consecutive register, we'll call it 8951 in this case. Then there are also user index and privilege registers and sets of registers for username and user password. Those are each eight words long. Now if we want, we can change this default address. So for example, if we make it 10,000, Click on Usage again, and you can see it's adjusted all of these examples accordingly. So now password would be at 10,012 local word. We'll keep this at the default for now, however. That's all we need from the security tabs. We can click OK here. On this window, what we see is an ASCII object to display the currently logged in user. And we have function keys to take us to different pop-up windows. So we can log in or log out add or delete users, change privileges, and change passwords. On the right we have bitlamps to show the user classes that are enabled for a logged in user. There's also a question mark icon which takes you to the info window number 11. Here's some hints and tips for you later on if you're looking at this in the sample project yourself. Back to the main window, we also have the text here for the account set up in this example. Now if we want to log in, we'll need a login window. In this case, we're taken to window number 70, where we can log in by user index. In order to allow operators to log in, you need to set up a option list object to, to begin. So from the object tab, select option list, choose drop down list mode and then set the source of item data to user account. And the monitor address, we should choose UAC user index here. So click on user defined tag if you want to get to this quickly and easily. Choose UAC user index. And this is where we will be storing the selection of the user that we wish to log in under. Next is a password entry, so we use an ASCII object for this. UAC password is the name of the tag. So this is eight words long. If you click on settings again, you can find it easily from the address type drop down field there. So once an operator has entered the selection and the password, they can use a set word object writing a value of two into the UAC command or control register. 
Writing a value of 2 will log in the designated user using that password that's been entered. A logout button can be created with a set word object as well. Here we're just writing a value of 3 into the UAC command register. That's all we need for the login pop-up window when we're logging in by user index. Now, when we log out, we can also just set up a logout button like we did here. Again, set word object writing a value of 3 into the UAC command register. Now we'll do a quick demo of this. You can see it working in offline simulation mode. And we will click login and log in as the administrator. This is successful. We can close this and we see all of the user classes that are enabled for the admin user. The logout button works there. And let's log in under the manufacturing user next. That is successful and the manufacturing user has only class A enabled. Great, so now what if we want to add or delete a user? Here we're taken to window 71 for adding an account and for deleting an account, window number 72. So let's look at those. For adding an account, you enter in a, a new name using the UAC username register. So this again you can find using the user define tag option very easily. Set up an ASCII object for this and then set up an ASCII object at UAC password again. Once you do this then you can choose the privileges for the new user. So what user classes should they be, have access to? These you use a set bit object to control. So if you want them to have class A privileges, you set up a set bit object to enable this. And you can toggle it and then you can display that here in this menu. When you've set all the bits for the respective privileges you wish to grant to the new user, Click on the Add button that will write a value of 5 into the UAC command register and then that will create that new user for you. For deleting an account, we just need to be able to select the user, so use an option list, drop down list, UAC user index to select the user, and then the delete command uses a value of 8 to write into the control register. Let's do a quick test of this. First we'll log in as an administrator. And then let's add a new user named Steve with a password of Steve in all caps. Okay, and we want to give privileges A, B, and C to Steve. So we'll add this user. And let's log in now as Steve. Okay, that's successful and we see all of those classes are enabled for Steve. Now I'll demo how to set the privileges, changing the privileges for a user, and changing the password for a user as well. So let's choose Steve, the user we just created. They have these privileges, but let's add D, E, and F. So that's pretty simple there. Click OK. And let's change their password to to Steve2. Okay, now let's log in as Steve one more time and make sure that these settings have taken. So the password successful and classes A through F are enabled for Steve. So how do these functions work? Let's go first to the add account we looked at delete account we just need to choose by index set privilege here we used and again you're using a set bit object toggling the individual bits for each class looking at local word bit 895 300 that would be class A so set up each of those so you can toggle them and the drop down list option list to select the user and for updating 
privileges or user classes, we write a value of 10 into the command or control register. For changing a password, we have the drop down list to select the user, and we use the same password field here. UAC password is the register for entering in a new password. And when we're updating a password, we write a value of 12 into the control register. So that's all for the functionality of this sample project, which you can download from maplesystems.com. Now let's take a look at this modified project that I set up. Here we've added a toggle switch to show or hide the system settings toolbar. That's something we'd like to recommend that you disable by default or you hide by default. You can do that from the system tab in system parameters. Click on hide system setting bar and then you can selectively re-enable that if you want. In our case, and to show off the security feature, we did set a restriction on this object so class C users only are able to toggle this. And if anyone else tries, there'll be a warning message that's displayed to them. So that will show or hide the toolbar icon that appears in the lower right on the HMI screen. We have another method for logging into. Besides using the user index, you can use a username method. So we created a second main window, and this login button instead takes us to a modified login and logout window. Window number 75 in our case, this is new. And to log in by username, instead of a option list, you just set up an ASCII object and choose the UAC username address for read and write address. For logging in though, the command value is different here too. So instead of a 2, we use a 1 if we're logging in by username. The 2 is used for logging in by user index. So these are two changes and we can test this out here. And then modifying uh, the add account window, we also set this up so that you can create accounts that will expire after X number of days. So this, what we do is we set up a numeric object. So this allows you to enter in a number of days. This will just be stored in UAC user index temporarily. And if we use a command value of 17, this allows us to create that expiring user account. Here's a list of our commands. So 17 is used for an expiring account by number of days. There's also other options for number of minutes or a temporary account that has a maximum number of days but would disappear as soon as the HMI is powered off too. So all of these can be found in the system parameters. If you go to the security tab and then click F1 on your keyboard it will take you to the help menus and from here click on control address to get to this list so that may come in handy for you later for us though we set this up so we could add a user that has an account that will expire in X number of days so let's test this out here so no users are logged in right now we can't toggle this unless we log in as an administrator. Now this is where it can come in handy to have the secret admin user. So looking at that briefly from the security tab, if you do select secret user, then they won't be able to log in as admin from the user index window. So let's show that now. So if we click login, user index, we can only select engineering or manufacturing. So let's instead go to this other login window, login by username. Here we can type in admin and login as the admin. Okay, and now we have access to all of those security classes and we can toggle this toggle switch. Now if we want to add an account that will expire, here's where we can do that. So first we'll clear this and we'll create another account called Steve, password Steve. 
and we'll have this expire after five days. We'll give Steve classes A, B, and C. So then Steve will be able to toggle this toggle switch that we set up here as well. Okay, let's test that. Okay, this works great. So that's just another example of how you can use the enhanced security features. We hope this example video has come in handy for you and we encourage you to download the enhanced security sample project from maplesystems.com. Thanks for choosing Maple Systems. Until next time.